all right, we're back with hour two of the webinar. Um, and yeah, as I guess we, we were mentioning, actually that one that you were showing right there too, that was, that's part of the fuzzy match that we're doing. And, and that was part of, yes. um, you and I were first looking at that SIFT function yes. and yes. script they built to demonstrate it. Um, and so, but what we realized was for the purposes and the, the, the one that we're using it, it, we didn't want to just use it, but yeah, if you want to demonstrate, um, was it the helpers that you want, you wanted to show we were going to show, um, this is the one. Yeah, this is the helper. So in general, we, there, there might be any topics that if they are interested in asking some questions, that's okay. But basically I could just show, um, some interesting ideas of things that you can do, you know, in general. So this little function that I'm writing in here, um, is very interesting. And this is one of those situations in which you would like to send keystrokes, okay? So as I mentioned before, you, know, you, you usually try not to send keystrokes. But um, one of the things that we're doing with this script is that, um, hold on, let me make sure that my screen is being shared because I think it is not being shared. Right. Uh, here we are. There we go. So this is the function that I'm working on right now. Let me just remove this part here. Uh, it is called search selected. It's part of the of the script that we sent um, uh, a few people to just kind of like test it around, and we're going to be showing it up. Uh, we're going to be releasing it soon. What it does is that it grabs text, uh, whatever text you have either selected or where the caret is and search for that on uh, the auto hotkey documentation. Now, the reason why we wanted to do this is that some editors give you the option to open the auto hotkey uh, um, documentation. It doesn't search for you. It just opens the documentation and you have to search. Or uh, in, in any case, if it does the search, it is just like it's not doing certain things that I'm doing. Um, or Notepad doesn't even have the help. Oh, right, so so that's what the other thing. So uh, it could be that your editor does not have a way to open the auto hotkey help file or whatever. So we wanted to have a, 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 a script that opens the help file with whatever you have selected or where your caret at is. Doesn't matter which editor you're using. It doesn't matter where you are. It could be on Google Chrome. It could be anywhere, okay? Now, <clears throat> One of the interesting things, we we load the table of contents. That's where I'm going to be performing the searches. But here's where I would actually send inputs. I not I usually do not send input. But in this case, this is the best way to do it for me to capture all editors. First of all, I'm just going to first send a control copy to see if you have selected text. So uh, what I'm trying to differentiate here is whether you have the caret in the middle of the word or at the beginning, or if you do not have anything selected, or if you have something selected like that. That's what the script is doing. It's just double checking. Do you have something selected or not? If it doesn't have anything selected, um, I would perform some actions. If it does, is if it has something uh, that is selected like that, it would just go ahead and grab the clipboard like that aromatically and just perform the search later on. But basically, you could, this little part in here, I'm sending characters two times. And that is to determine where is the caret. So say, for example, if you have the caret in the middle of the word or at the end of the word or at the beginning of the word, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Where are you in that word? Um, and with this, what I do is that I just take the, less, the, the leftmost character. So say if I'm in the middle of the word and I do shift left, it would actually grab one character there. If I'm at the beginning of the word and I try to do the same, it would actually grab an empty space or a tab or something like that. That's what I'm actually checking for. And when you do that, then I decide what to do, whether to just go ahead and do control shift right to select all, or if I'm in the middle of the word, control left and then control shift right. 
it is a very interesting uh, concept to grab whatever you have selected at the moment. And after that, what the script does is that it just goes ahead and whenever you press the, the, the button, it opens the documentation on that page, whatever you have selected at the moment, and actually gives you some uh, a tab to uh, videos related to it on certain YouTube channels, okay? So in general, the, this little tool will be cool for you if you're learning out a hotkey, by the way, to get information very quickly um, and about a specific uh, uh, um, command that you have selected or whatever. And not only that, if you actually learn a little bit faster with videos, then don't worry, you will be able to go ahead and um, open up the videos and take a look at them. Now I'm facing a little bit of an issue here. I don't know if somebody here knows a little bit of uh, this stuff. Like um, I am using an iframe for displaying the documentation, right? But sometimes I'm having a, a, a information about that the that particular documentation page cannot be displayed on an iframe. Now I'm just going to start researching as to what I can do about that. But in general, you could also always click on open this content in the new window, and it's just going to go ahead and do that. I do feel that it's related to the control that I'm using to display it, because I am using the um, the ActiveX control, the HTML file control. Maybe that's if I just change that to a, a normal uh, Internet Explorer control, that might help. Um, or if I use other ways of displaying the information, maybe that helps. But mainly what happens is that I'm using an iframe and you know it just gets angry at it for some reason. So I don't know if you have any questions regarding that, if you want to, if you want me to um, explain part of the code or if you want me to show part of the code of how I would solve certain issues, then I would be more than glad to assist you in that. Yeah, we are adding going to add a, um, an actual search edit box to be able to type the search as well into that view. Um, yes. And the other one we thought about was adding translations to be able to click a button and have it translate the page. But that one, I'm not, you know, we're not 100% certain. Yeah, how many people, how many, it would translate the whole thing. Like it would translate the documentation into your language if it is not on the, on the, original um website because i think they do have some um some translations available probably uh the german versions they have and some others but i do not remember having a, a spanish version so let me go ahead and double check on that oh no they do not have any I thought that there were some versions of the documentation in different languages, but I do not see it here anymore. So I'm not really sure now. So yeah, that would be, I don't know how many people would, oh, here. Oh, here we go. So we have German, Korean, and Chinese maybe? I didn't even know that was there. Yes, yes, yes. I, I remember having that um, on the previous versions, but I remember that it was just a few languages. It was not all of them. So you have the English, German, Korean, and Chinese, I think, or, or you know, Mandarin or something like that. I'm not really sure about that. Yeah. Of course. Does anyone else have any questions or anything or something they want to work on? Let me see. I'm reading the 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 chat right now. Yeah, we were talking about the, uh, uh, what are those things called? The, the stream, the stream deck. Stream deck yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Which, which Jackie and I, we did a, a podcast, I think, on it of, um, I had bought, I thought I had it right here, a 10 key, because I saw the things and I'm like, holy cow, they're, to me, they're expensive for what they offer. 150. And, uh, yeah, so we did a, a podcast on adapting you know auto hotkey live jackie just found a script and we made it work you know well we made the the general principle work um and then i think if if marche it was were you the one um that shared your your screen because he has an amazing tool also um we did a whole webinar on on his his tool of 
programmatically, you know, creating uh, using a display, you know, he had a couple, but one they're virtual or one was okay. virtual. One was actually using like a tablet, um, but you could. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. The... He, he, he just mentioned that right now. Yeah, he, he made an analog solution um, yeah. based on the touch on the <laughs> touch. Yeah. Here was Gato. <laughs> El Gato. What is, where are you from? <laughs> that, that is actually something Spanish right there. That's the cat. Why do you have the cat? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, that's a good one. I found a couple credit cards. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what they were doing up there. Oh, really? Oh, that's a cool one. Yeah, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> Did uh, anyone else have anything they wanted to work on? Want to have a question on? Want a demonstration on something? I mean, I, I know there's a lot of people here that have some really cool stuff we've done that we could <laughs> hear if someone has a question on something specific. New version of hot strings. Yeah, that's awesome. Are they like extra hot? Seven <laughs> K names long. Actually, I do. Now that we're talking about this, I do have a question. Has anybody else experienced um, uh, hot strings being very slow? when you have a continuation section. Sure. But, I, mean, I, I have it paced when I have a long one. That's what I was going to say, that that's my only solution to it, right? Yeah. Right. So is that something that it, it is out of hotkey, like it's just out of hotkey handles that in a very bad way? Or because I've never seen. Yep, that's that's the same thing that I have been trying. But it's interesting. Yeah, perhaps it's more to do with the controls you're trying to shove it into and they can't accept them fast enough, right? But that's been my default is anything longer than 100 characters, if that even. I just say, what? You know, who cares? Back up yeah. your clipboard, shove it in the clipboard, paste it. Right, that's what I, that's what I do. That's my, my, my solution to it. <laughs> now, one, yeah. and I shared this, and I can go find it, I think, but... um. I saw an example of an HTML clipboard, you know, where you, where you can shove, uh, make a hot string, because that's what that was how I used it. Was they're like, oh, here's how you put something into your clipboard as HTML. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, then if I had a hot string trigger to it, then I could actually have hot strings that have HTML in them. Um, and, oh, okay. Um, and I actually demoed it, I think, in a webinar, but it, it was I was still get hung up at, at certain times. It wouldn't quite paste. It wouldn't do it properly like in word and, and i never quite put my finger on it because i wanted to go back That's to right. what's happening yeah 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 there's something weird going on um but see you later geek dude thanks for dropping by um geek dude he, he did oh by the way and actually Isaiah, so he's been Isaiah has been he's been doing a lot of stuff lately um so but him and i haven't actually talked as much as we normally do and uh I don't know if I told, I think I sent you the link, but I don't know if you saw it. Geek Dude had created a new a C, um, C JSON, I think is what he called it, but it's it's an auto hotkey way using C, right, that, to, to parse JSON. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, okay. So he, he built a parser. Oh, yeah. That's good. So, that's awesome. And it was right after, remember the video you and I and Maestrith did of, of yes. doing the regex comparison between the um, that and the parsing with the, the JSON, maybe it was Coco's library. Yeah. I forget. yeah. But um, I'm like, hey, because I unfortunately didn't have that script um, where we did the test. At least I don't think I do. And I'm like, oh, I'd love to take uh, Geek Dude's library and redo that test we did and see how that performs. Yeah, no, well, uh, if he wrote a, a CSON on, like like a C parse, uh, JSON parser in C, I would tell you that it is unlikely that um, anything written in auto hotkey is going to perform not even close yeah. to it. No, but we'll, anyway, we'll still see, we'll check it out, right? It'll be a really yeah. good comparison to say, yeah, this is, and this gets back to, it's a really great thing to bring home the whole conversation earlier where Dimitri was 
wanting to kind of create this new way of doing things. And we're like, well, yeah, it's going to be a lot of work, but you know what? Sometimes you do hit a home run and it's worth that payout where suddenly you develop something that's really cool. And now there is a better approach to, to doing it. Right. Yes, but it takes exactly. to, to get there. Yes, that's right. That's how it goes. So in any case. Yeah, do anybody else have anything? I guess if not, we're we're good to go. Um yeah, Dimitri, Dimitri has a question. Oh great. Yeah, go ahead. Do ah, you have a question, okay. Dimitri? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, actually I wanted to um to comment on that because I also recently was working on a component AHK and um, I had the issue that it was kind of slow because my return values were quite large. Mm -hmm. And then I found on the internet a, a fix of it uh, and that used the clipboard. It created a, a hidden input field on the web page and then copy that data and then you could use your clipboard in AutoHotKey to read it. So it was, I was kind of uh, happy to, to find it because it was a lot faster. And then uh, another uh, dude on the forum uh, told me because I posted it on, on the forum. He told me, yeah, but just use the other parser of, uh, I think it's called Tea Drinkers. He also has a JSON parser. Mm -hmm. And it also performed way better. And uh, indeed, Geek Dude, I, I, I asked why do it's not included in uh, Chrome AK and Geek Dude told me that, yeah, but in some cases it wouldn't work and it's relying on the Internet Explorer and things like oh, that. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he that's... also told that he was working on a better version of that. So, and so probably it's... that's what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. that's true. Awesome. One, um, just tangentially related to the general conversation. I was talking with Mace with you on the call with the client. It was, it's so funny. He gets so excited over, you know, stuff he's working on. Cause like I said, the client doesn't understand technology, you know, at all. And I don't blame her. Right? Yeah. But, um, he's like, Hey, let me show you how I, I did this in the, in he's, he's doing everything now in C right. Or C sharp. I still always forget which one, but, um, he was like, yeah, I found a much faster way to, to, to put push data into Excel. And he's like, yo, you blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, the client, the client's just like, uh-huh. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> I didn't get any, yeah. I didn't get a dive into the coding, but I'm looking right. forward to seeing what he did and then possibly still take that approach with yeah. our Excel library and updating it to, to help it. Because, you know, there was the one you and I were working on, Zaya, so we were ripping data from a what 400 as 400 is what they're called? an as 400 yes uh, mainframe um and we're automating sending a request and ripping it out of it and dumping it into an excel file um, yes. but that was very very slow because we were doing one row at a time and then you know one of the simple way was to say well let's just dump it to a file and then import that file instead which i think that's what we went with right that was yes much uh, we were using the file and reading the file line by line and yeah that's exactly right uh, you can also create an object and just that's put what that object said. in yeah. a range. Yeah, well, that's that's exactly. He said he created an object and then told it the, the upper left cell to where to, to dump it. Um, but I didn't see the code when we were talking. That's when I'm like, oh, okay, I'll have to look. All uh, right. Because when he says create an object, I'm like, well, what do you mean? How, by what, what do you? How do you yeah. create an object that's quickly? Yeah, an, ex <laughs> an Excel object or an auto an object in your language and then how would right. Excel know how to build that structure? But anyway, yeah. Yeah, that's how it is. Sometimes actually the code speaks a little bit better than when somebody tries to explain it to you. Like you, you stay like, what, what did you mean by that? Well, that when was, you read yeah. the code, you're like, Oh, uh -huh. right. That's what he meant. <laughs> that's how it goes. Okay. Then. Yeah. So I will be running soon. Yeah, if anyone else, if you don't have anything else, I think we'll wrap it up. Um, thank you all for being here. And um, I'll, you know, 
uh, get these recordings out. But uh, thank you so much for being here. See you next month. Bye. Okay. Ciao. Bye.